Welcome to the Dirt Shed Show with me, Martin Ashton, and look at it. Myself, Blake Sampson. Good to be back in the shed, Martin. I love it here. Yeah, I wish so I home was from actually. Home. I wish I was actually in the shed with you, Bingers, but not yet. But it's getting very close. It's very not close. long before I will actually be back in the shed myself. <gasps> it could be next week, or it could be the week after. Yeah, no more green screening. I'm fed up no, with green screening. Yeah, no more looking at nothing over there. Yeah, yeah. See, I keep looking over there, but what I can actually see is my garden. Not Blake, but anyway, never mind. Um, welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show. Um, we are going to be looking at innovation in mountain biking today, Blake. Mm. Um, I think I've spotted something that I think could be the next great yeah. innovation in mountain biking not only in okay. mountain biking maybe in cycling but this innovation would change every single bike design from this moment onwards right that's how be great special. it is it better it's be great, special right? so i'm going to get into it and then i'm going to show you some other things that i think could be the next great innovation in other ways in mountain biking yeah. and maybe yeah. we'll talk about some ones that have totally changed the, the landscape of the sport in the past mm -hmm. um so mm -hmm. right let me tell you about this it's called driven by ceramic speed okay it's, oh, I've seen look this. at this it's so beautiful right so it's been That's... around for a little while it, it was a ceramic speed design yeah. um, a guy called jason designed and invented it um, and jason uh has now got driven tech which is a, a subsidiary now of ceramic speed um, oh, and wow. this project is really gathering pace um, i love it because it's it's technical but it's such a simple and beautiful design once it's all packaged what do you think yeah. blake man i love it how would it work on a full suspension bike well, I, I'm not sure if it if it has actually been tested, but what I love is that we're seeing something right in its early days. But apparently, this thing is right. Check this out. It's more efficient, lighter, yeah. easier to produce, more aerodynamic. It's sleek, enclosed, and cleaner than a normal drivetrain. No All of those way. things. Yeah, it no, out, that... it outdoes a normal drivetrain completely unreal i love it it looks it looks simple it does like, i mean obviously when you look into it and when you look yeah. into how it works it is so complex it's very very clever super smart but yeah. it, it, it is so efficient and i i just love this one like i said once it's packaged on the bike yeah. got that enclosure over it Suddenly, mm -hmm. all of that junk that we've got so used to on bikes is yeah. gone. It's just gone. It's suddenly just a swing arm. Uh, and I think if this would work on a full suspension bike, like I said, I don't know if it has, and I'm going to talk to Jason more about it if I can, um, then, then it could be the way mountain bikes look in the future. I, I do like it. Do you know how I'm just, I'm just brainstorming how it would work on a full suspension bike? It would yeah. be like a drive shaft on a car. There's a look, especially on a four wheel drive, it can move in itself so it can extend. Yes. Maybe that could be like a drive shaft where it's a shaft within a sleeve mm. and then it could move. Yeah. Depending yeah. on where it. I, I, I mean, like it, mine. Yeah, I mean, I, I more than like it. I love it, right? So like you can, it'll stop. It would stop rock strikes and all that. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. I mean, no derailleur. Everybody wants oh. that. Derailleurs are stupid. And I bet that's, that's not so stupid. quiet. Oh, yeah, man. I, I, I want to hear it because I bet it's got a very different sound to it. Mm. Um, Cy Richardson took a good look at it when it was at Eurobike um, last year, and he, he loved it uh, yeah. over on GCN. But could this be the next great innovation in mountain biking? And that would change the way bikes look. Now, imagine, okay, right? These moments <laughs> do happen in cycling because it's yeah. happened quite recently, okay? Something that's been a massive shift in mountain biking recently that we've all suddenly become very used to in a short period period of time mm -hmm. e-bike e-bikes yes very true we've just yeah. come yeah it's just a natural thing we've yeah, made a channel about e-bikes yeah i mean you go to a bike park now 
There's mm -hmm. absolutely tons of e-bikes. Tons all and there. tons of them. And we're all totally happy with it now. We look mm -hmm. at them and we can look at them like a normal bike and go, that one's cool. That one's, yeah. bit, I'm not sure now. You know, we're not like, ah, e-bikes anymore. Suddenly yeah. we've adopted it and mountain biking has changed because of it. So yeah, it has. it's happening all the time. I'll tell you another time it happened, Blake. Yes. <laughs> another time it happened, cheese grips. Oh yeah, I remember that. We changed the world with cheese. We grips. changed we the world of mountain biking. Ones. You yeah. could now suddenly, suddenly, you could go out on a mountain bike ride and just take your food with you, without adding any. I mean, it's a bike packer's dream. Cheese yeah. grips. The grips are made of cheese. Amazing. It's it's, it's incredible. Cheese <laughs> grips. TM. Yeah. Yes. It's, um, it, yeah. I'll tell you another serious one that I think's maybe becoming more adopted, but for a moment looked like a weird prototype thing on downhill bikes. The no, idler, the idler wheel. Oh yeah, yeah. Now they're the hype. Yeah, that's more and all more happening. Bikes have got more and more bikes on. have got them. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And is is it something that's shifting the way? But what I love about the driven system, okay, is the idler yeah. wheel that makes a rear suspension drivetrain more efficient and yeah. uh, basically make the suspension work way better. But yeah, it's adding more things to the bike. Okay. Is to try and the make driven it the driven system's taking things away. It's 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 making it more stealth, more sleek, more beautiful. Eliminating. Yeah, it's so good. So I I, I keep coming back to is that driven system something that could change the way bikes look? I really do. You can actually go onto a seed fund page and invest mm -hmm. in that. I'm not suggesting you should. This is definitely not investment advice. But I'm just saying you you can. <laughs> Um, and people have, and it is gaining yeah. a lot of momentum. Uh, mm. So I really love it. So the idler wheel, that's another good example. What about in the future, Blake? What do you think Ooh. we could see beyond driven, changing mountain biking? And what have we got coming that is, that is going to change and innovate mountain biking? Data chips, Martin. Built into your bike, oh. built into your helmet. <laughs> yes! Hey, okay. that's a great idea. So you could so there are there are tubes that come with data chips in them, so you know when yeah. they they're, they're you got, is you it, get, yeah. Is it that they know that it's the tire's gone down? Because I would know that. Or is it that oh, they know, know when that. the tire needs to be replaced or something like that? I don't know. Oh, imagine that. So imagine if you had a tire system like a clever tire, smart tire, smart tire, tire yes. whatever you want to call it, call it, and yes. it, it will. It'll send a message to your phone to say, your tire's running a bit low on grip, you need some new ones. No, it just goes to chain reaction cycles and orders your, your new tires to come. Oh, that could be very dangerous if you love skids. You don't do, you don't do anything. You don't do you anything. Get the tires just keep coming to your house. You knock on the door and you're like, more f***ing tires! I don't need any more tires! Stop the tires! And your tires order more tires and those tires have got chips and they're ordering f***ing tires and all you've got is tire after tire! F***ing sake, going too many tires. Actually, you're going off for what? Let's what not, about? Let's what, what not about? get off track. Okay, <laughs> what about if a helmet would tell you that you've had, you've sweated too much. You need to drink more water because <laughs> your pip a sweats. <laughs> what I have about a helmet that has got a chip in it that is yeah. connected to yeah. a neurolink that you've got in your skull that's made by Elon Musk, and you, it tells you when to take your helmet off. So you oh, don't no. decide. You don't decide, you don't decide anymore. It's locked to your pip. <laughs> it's on your head until your helmet says leave. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I want that one. I don't know, but data chips, that's a good one. That could be yeah. the future of mountain biking. Bing, as we got to get going with this show. Oh, we do, we, we rambled on, on that one. <laughs> um, let's head over to the news and sickest thing of the week with Tom and Toff. <laughs> What's up everyone? So much to talk about this week and I'm going to jump right in with Lea Gang. Let's start with the XE where Loana Lecomte and Matthias Flückiger dominated the weekend with both short track and main event victories. It was a close race between Flückiger and Andre Sink who finished strong just 14 seconds back and a well earned third place for Anton Cooper too. The women's race saw an amazing return to the podium for Jenny Risfeds who clinched second place just 2 seconds ahead of Laura Stigger. 
He landed an F across the line in fourth with a broken hand from an off-camera crash on lap four. On to the downhill now, where Troy Brosnan and Valley Hall qualified fastest. In the main race though, Camille Balanche once again showed why this is her track, taking the win in the tricky conditions. In her first Elite World Cup, Valley was posting green splits all the way down, but unfortunately crashed on the second to last corner, leaving her in second, and it was Monica Hrasnik rounding out the podium in third. In the men's race, Troy Brosnan made good on his qualifying run and clinched his first win since Val Nord 2017, and third Elite victory. Thibaut de Preyer was on a blistering run until a stall in the wood section. Somehow he still managed second, which shows just how much of a mad one he was on. Armory Pierron set the time to beat earlier in the race, but ended up in third. Not bad for his first World Cup in two years. Rhys Wilson once again dominated the wood section, setting the fastest time in the key section, but a stall in that last corner would keep him off of the podium this time round. I just want to round out the race chat with a quick shout out to Win Masters, who has bought back the Privateer of the Week award for 2021. Hopefully it gives the achievements of those riders racing under their own steam a little bit more limelight. Now naturally, when race season comes around, so does a whole host of releases as we see athletes riding new bikes. And this year is no exception. For more on all of these new bikes I'm about to mention, make sure you watch tomorrow's GMBN Tech Show with Doddy, as there's too much for me to go to in depth here. First off, we have the brand new Scott Spark, sleekly designed with that internal shock reminiscent of the Lincoln frame from Bold, a company that Scott bought a few years back. Imagine how much lighter this thing stays throughout a race without a linkage to hold onto mud. In the downhill, we saw the MS Mondraker team on a carbon version of the Summum, which includes that mind built in telemetry system, and we also saw the unveiling of the Commensal Supreme prototype. The Riding Addiction team have been on this new frame for a little while now, but it's always been under this moto horse blanket thing to hide its intricacies. It's still clearly a work in progress, but it looks like they're moving on to what they're calling a VHP or Virtual High Pivot System, a six bar system with the idler now fixed to the frame so it doesn't change position throughout the travel. New bikes don't just stop at the races though. Production mixed wheel bikes seem to be a real trend this week. The new Evil Insurgent has a different take on the mullet option. We often see bikes being designed around 29 inch wheels and then just making the 650B rear wheel work. Evil have flipped that on its head and made a 650B machine with 168mm of rear travel and 180mm at the front. Which if you wanted to make even more monster trucky, you can get a 29 inch wheel on the front with a 170 fork. Forbidden are now also offering a full build Druid with their Ziggy link rather than just offering the link as an option as well. Last but by no means least with this trendy new haircut is the new Santa Cruz Bronson. Available in a carbon frame and with 150mm of rear wheel travel through a 650B wheel and 160mm of travel up front through a 29er. Santa Cruz didn't exactly go wild with the long low and slack numbers, keeping it relatively conservative to match the intended use of this fun, lively trail bike. And as always with the new Santa Cruz, there's a Juliana version, the Rubion, to match. Interestingly, all bikes feature a new Santa Cruz carbon handlebar from stock too. Very quick headlines to close out. Pro BMXer Brad Sims has also joined the Camden Collective, riding big wheels like they're small. And our friends over at Trash Free Trails have held their first annual trail summit, doing the first bits of analysis on the state of the trails report, which will provide the foundation for a five-year research project on litter in local ecosystems. And last but not least, we've got a rad new tech tee, just like this one in a different color, over on shop.gmbn.com right now. So head over there and take a look at that. It's about time for the sickest thing of the week. Let's get over to Toph. Cheers, Tom. Hey, everybody. Right, so this week's sickest thing is a new 3 dome edit called Amphibious. Now, I don't know why it's called that, but I'm guessing it's something to do with him wearing a jacket eh, all the time. Anyway, right, so it's a super fun edit. As usual, he's like picking apart bits of the trail, doing like tire slides and manuals and just generally jumping off everything and anything really which i think is super important when you live in the uk because we don't really have a whole lot of elevation and i think it's best to make most fun of what we got oh and the footage was chopped to casey and the sunshine band give it up which is a super banger from the 80s and it's also sick to see that canada has a new dirt jump hardtail for the first time since the chase back in the day how crazy is that it's called dave i don't know why maybe it's like a signature frame or something which would be really cool but yeah, I mean, up until now, like all the team riders have been riding what looks to be like a rebranded uh, GT La Bomber. So this is like pretty sick to see like a proper official Cannondale again. But I did have a look at the 2021 GT La Bomber and they do look basically almost identical and the same with the geometry. So maybe we can look into that or maybe Doddy's going to talk about it on the tech channel at some point. So yeah, that's my sickest thing this week. It's time to go back to the dirt shed.
Thank you, Tom and Toph. That's great. Um, I tell you what, we're talking about innovation this week. Yeah, we um, I was I was over on Kickstarter, Blake. Oh, you love um, Kickstarter, don't you? I do love Kickstarter, especially for these ideas. Now, I've got a couple of great uh, innovations, mm. um, inventions. I don't think they're going to change the landscape of mountain biking, but I think these could be goers um, and, and worth a bit of time. What do you think of this first one? Polar plugs. Oh, that looked like heated grips, Martin. Yeah, no, basically it's like a plug insert that goes in the end of your handlebars, yeah. like, a, like a grip plug. Yeah. Uh, and basically you charge it up, you put it in there, and then it heats up the actual handlebar and grip to a nice temperature, keeps your hands warm. No way, well, that's actually pretty <laughs> clever. Bloody genius. <laughs> that is clever. What happens polar if you plugs. like, what happens if you crash and you destroy that polar plug? That's it. Expensive yeah. foreign. Well, yeah, but you could say that about anything, about Very anything true. on your bike. I mean, it's it's great. You just charge. They charge up. You press the little button in, turns them on. It heats your grip up. It's I like that. Genius. Do you know where like that, that could? So, do you know where that can live? On my fat where? bike when I go out into the snow. Oh, if mate, I ever go snow riding, I think that would work. Polar plugs, great idea. What about but, this one? Fender bag. Now wait, Blake. I know what you're thinking straight away. Wait. Yeah. Wait, I'm thinking. Okay. Wait, no, wait, wait. <laughs> Fender bag, wait. Okay. Wait, Blake. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let me explain. Yeah. Okay. A rear mud guard can be an ugly thing on a mountain bike. It's true. Okay. Yeah. But the Fender bag, I think, kind of gets rid of the ugly line that the flappy mud guard creates. And instead, now we've got a really nice line, the swooping line up from the. Uh, Bottom bracket up over the tire of the mud guard, quite yeah. elegant, and yeah. we've got we've got a roof to that, a nice shape to that in the bag itself. Suddenly, a rear mud guard doesn't look so bad after all, does it? It does on a full suspension bike with a dropper post. That if that no, linkage man, moves looks... up a lot, it's going to that it, bag. Look, it, it's yet to be tested. I'm just okay. saying, as far as rear mud guards go. Not a bad it looks, option. It looks all right. Yeah, it looks okay. I like that one. The fender bag. Bike packing. Gets, I think all I think all round that could work. Okay. That could work. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Those are two really great innovations, and it has got me thinking about a certain uh, moment in the show that we could probably get to right now, Blake. Yeah. What is it? Do we sing into it, Mr. Ashton, or Let's do go we just for go straight it. into Three, it? Three, two, one. Hacks and bodges! Hacks and bodges! Hacks We're out of tune, Martin! Hacks and bodges! 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 Bodges! Anyway, um, anyway, right into hacks and bodges this week. <laughs> um, now, Blake, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat you this week. It's a brake lever special. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. Yeah. Bit of a trend going here. I've seen a lot of people replacing brake levers, and here's a couple of very original ways to do it. Oh First one gosh. is from Jack. He was riding at Forest of Dean. Yeah. Um, did an epic manual over a tabletop, but looped out and fell backwards, snapping his brake lever. Oh, so poor guy. He, he, he trucked this basically bolt into the system to replace his brake lever. It, it looks improbable that it could work. I don't know. Apparently it did. Wow, that's a hell of a bodge. Ugly, huh? It's yeah, super ugly, but you know what? Like, to replace that blade, that lever, yeah. he probably won't be able to, because the shortage on stuff in the world right now is nuts. So I think he's oh, going to be riding a bolt for a, long, <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> well, it's not, a bad, it's not a bad way to do it, but no, I've got worse. I've got worse, Blake. You got worse? Check out, check out this one from Rick. Over in oh Colorado. My. No. <laughs> How does that look? At? He's jabbed his knife into it. Just stick your knife in it. That'll do. Fine. No, it's that, not fine. That's nuts. That's nuts. That's, uh, speeches? <laughs> what I like about it, right? Not only can you cut your fingers clean off. Yeah. But actually, 
it makes quite a nice lever shape. <laughs> it does, yeah. The knife is very ergonomic, isn't it? To the hand, <laughs> to the fingers. Maybe he's onto something. Oh my God, it's so stupid. So yeah, why not use a knife blade as a, <laughs> as a brake lever? <laughs> Hacks and bodges sometimes are mad. Um, the uploader on GMBN is full of amazing ideas like these. This one, mm -hmm. maybe not such a great suggestion, <laughs> but definitely enjoyable. So thank you to Rick for sending it in. And yeah, I'm glad it worked Rick. out and you got back safe. He did get home because of it. Yeah, um, well, that's, but, I guess that's all that matters. Absolutely, but these moments sometimes are really useful to all the other mountain bikers out there because they're great ideas. Mm -hmm. So if you've, you've done something with your bike that's a great idea, something where you've uh, solved a problem or you've mm -hmm. done a quick fix or you've spent a lot of time making something really fabulous that you're proud of, then yeah. send it into the GMBN uploader and uh, we'll take a look at it and maybe it could feature on the show here next week. Bit of a crazy selection this week, but maybe next week it could be your super sleek design. Let us know by uploading to the uploader. Mr Ashton, uh, right. be, be, before yes. we carry on, we, we need to pick a winner. Um, well, I'm going to pick the winner if it's all right with you, Blake. I'm you can give pick the winner. G yeah, I'm going to give a GMBN race top to... They're both so crazy, you both get a GMBN race top. Oh! Rick, Rick and Jack... I loved them this week. Two race tops going out like that. Can I do that? I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. I've done it. I've done it. He's done it. Two race tops. Let's move on. It's time for some news from the Enduro World Series world. Rick McLaughlin, what you got? Good afternoon, Dirt Shed Show. Yes, it is all finally about to happen. I'm about to pack a bag, pack a van, and head to Italy for the opening Enduro World Series of the year at the Met EWS Val di Fassa Trentino. Listen, this season is what we've all been waiting for. 2020, we got it done, we got the job done, we had some great races, but this year we are returning to full strength. With all the big names returning to action, a full team out from ourselves, more coverage from you guys than ever before, thanks to GMBN, GMBN Tech, and the Enduro World Series channels. More racers, more access to the teams, We've got uh, the first race of the year is a double event, one of the first ones we've ever had a low, so the, the EWS Pros will race on the Wednesday of next week and then they'll race on the Saturday again. Now that is really, really intriguing because they'll know the stages, they'll know the track. Enduro there is very, very limited access to track time to keep things as fair as we can, so Wednesday it'll be all off with a bang and then Saturday we'll get to see some tactics come into play. The riders will know where they lost time and they'll know where they can gain time crucially. So it is all to play for. Look, everyone here is absolutely buzzing to get the season started again. Stay tuned to GMBN, GMBN Tech and Enduro World Series channels as well as all our social media channels, World Enduro on Instagram and Facebook and we will keep you up to date with everything that's going on from the Met EWS Val di Fassa Trentino just as soon as we get it. I can't wait, I need to pack, I'll see you next week. Wow, it's incredible, the new is coming in thick and fast Martin, EWS is yeah. on the horizon and it's getting closer and closer. Oh, so good, so good. Oh. Do you know um, Nick, uh, Rich, and Nick, uh, Rich and Doddy are going yeah. out to both rounds? They yeah. are indeed. Yeah, oh, it's they are indeed. Now, Mr. Ashton, again. I'll tell you what's just come over that horizon and it's in green form. We have just got a new tech tee. It's a forest green tech tee. Oh, Look at this. Man. Oh, I, love I can't wait to put that on my back, actually. I love this. I love it. I've me. got it in the grey. I love the tech tees. The material is amazing. I'm wearing um, one It right actually now. works as a really good underlayer as well. It's absolutely it brilliant. It does, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. That's in so our, that's GMBN in our shop. GMBN shop. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Head over there, head over there, because that's a great way of supporting the channel. That's what I've heard, Blake. Mm. That's what I've heard. I've also heard something really amazing, Blake. I forgot yeah. to tell you about this. What's that? This is big news, actually. If yeah. you go to the like button just below the video there and you press it, it turns blue. Try oh. it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go on. It does. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Go for it. Uh, what else we got then, Blake? What are we doing next? We've got a caption contest, man, which we fluffed up last week. We forgot to put it in a photo. <laughs> So, <laughs> awesome. That's unlike us. That's, uh, we are so sorry, but here's this week's photo and uh, 
caption contest that all you like in the comment section down below. <laughs> Hashtag caption <laughs> contest. Caption contest your life out of that. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a few different versions of the Dirt Shed Show, isn't there? There's the Neil and Martin Show, a bit more yeah. structured. The yeah. Doddy and Martin Show, that's um, but maybe you've got a better form to it. Um, there's the Rich and Martin Show, that just gets used as dog food. And then we've got we've got the Martin and Blake Show, which is a shambles. Oh, no, it's not. It's a I shambles, think it's, but it's a fun one. It's, it's a fun one. Give us your caption for that image down in the comment section down below. Have a look. Blake Bolton. Blake Bolton. We're in. We're in. Who's gonna get a super nice this week, Mr. Ashton? Hopefully, well, all of them. All of them. Let's see if we can get a full set super nice. Can it be done? Could it this be this week? Here we go. We're starting with Anthony, his giant trance in Bahrain in the Middle East. Bahrain. This, this, uh, I hate to say it, but I don't think this is a super nice. Mm, no. Do you know what? If it was a it's fat nice. bike on the beach, that, in, that would be a super nice all day, every day. I will say this, right? Giant Trance and Giant Rain, both very good bikes. Yeah. I like them. Um, I just feel I just feel like it's not got quite enough. That's nice. It hasn't got anything making me go, ooh. I don't know if maybe the shot could be closer in, but I think the bike the bike's got what it needs. I just think yeah. the shot's let it down a little bit. It's nice. 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 Next up, we have got oh, Jonathan's yay. GT Tequesta. Look at in his uh, back garden. This, yeah, glamorous location. It's not quite yeah. Bahrain, is it? <laughs> no, it's not quite Bahrain. Um, you know what? Some bikes are like vintage, aren't they? Some bikes are like just classic. They're, they're bikes you just go, oh, I remember having one of them. I don't remember having one of them. I think this one's just old. <laughs> I think it's just old. It's just yeah. old. It's nice. But i tell you one thing I do like about it. It looks like it's all, it's original. Yeah, Literally, look at the size of those brake levers. It's still got the uh, it's still got the reflector in the rear wheel. Is that original? That's amazing. Uh, That's nice. No, even nice. Nice. It's not. It's nice. It's nearly more. It's nearly more. It's nice. Okay. Oh no, Blake. Could we have the full first full <laughs> nice? Oh, bike vault. Um, Where? Oh, thank it's God. Chris. I we're gonna, it's Chris's or Bayer Ockham. Oh, look at that. Ooh, you're loving this at the moment, aren't you? You're loving I like this. The, I love the backdrop. It's incredible. The colour is your favourite colour. I think this is a super nice, Blake. Do you reckon? This is super nice. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. This is super oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Super. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. And do you know why I like it so much? Why is that? Cheese I'm grips. That's got cheese grips on it. That's right. They're a real product, and that bike has got cheese grips on it's it. It's got cheese yeah. grips. Well done, Chris, for buying our cheese grips. You're the only yeah. person. Ooh. Okay. Next Radon. up, Jan's Radon Cragger. Oh, uh, I like lovely it. Lovely hardtail. One downside to this bike. Don't though, say isn't there? tan walls. One, Mine. Get one 21st huge century. Huge downside. No. Ah, oh, these cafe latte sidewalls. No, yeah. it's lovely. No, uh, gross. I'm going to say it's a super nice. My name's Jan and I live in Germany and I ruined my bike with tan walls. No, you didn't, Jan. That's incredible. That was a super nice for me. <laughs> Don't listen to uh, At Jan Strecker on Instagram. Go follow him. He's a good dude. Right, oh. next up, we have got... Oh. Custom <laughs> Whitey Capra CF Fire Trail. That's his name. It's nice, man. It's nice. Well, um, his name trail. is Fire Trail. <laughs> the mythical him is a Fire Trail. It's weird. The angle of this shot has made it look like it's the most insanely exaggerated mullet. <laughs> yeah, massive front. Tire. Massive 29er front and a 26 rear. <laughs> yeah, I like it. He's actually look at it. He's perched up. He's gone for a yeah. ride. His bike's all dirty. It's the color orange that you love. I like YT. You like YT. And his name's Firestar Trail, so I think that's super, super nice. nice. Super nice. It looks mean. Yeah. Love it. Well done, Oof. Fire Trail. Oh, next up. Wow, yeah. look at this. This is I from like the David. graffiti. 
Yeah, it's a 2020 Dartmoor. David did that graffiti himself just to show off the bike. Um, this is in Dewersburg. He's got lots of great parts on it. Um, Hope floating disc, Oof. Magura MTs as well. So nice. one of one of each, I guess. He's got Rentful Fat Bar on there. Uh, RFR Dropper 150. Uh, he's got Death Grips on there. It hasn't gone with a cheese grip. Mm. Mistake. Death Grips is good. Nah, not as good as cheese grips. True. They don't you smell as eat. good. What are you gonna do when you're hungry? You got death grips. <laughs> Nothing. You're gonna starve. Because you're death. death grips. You're gonna die. <laughs> Cheese That's grips. Nice. Nice. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got Jamie's Diamond. 2019 Diamond Diamond back. <laughs> Why are you laughing so much? I just got the giggles now. You'll have to get us through this, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jamie's Diamond back 2019. I'm going all. I'm flushing up over here. I said, where is that? Texas. I don't know. He's gone. He's gone. Keep going. He's gone. Well, this is. Uh, I think that's a super nice, Martin. Super nice. Yay! Super Let's nice. quickly get Martin out of there. And that's it, Martin. That was the last one. I'm uh, sorry. I got the giggles. Um, and I've lost my track. So what, what are we doing next, Blake? <laughs> it's straight on to fails and bails and sends and all that rad jazz. Dude, just roll that tape. <laughs> Run VT. Bravo. Oh! oh. <laughs> He's still laughing! That was some good riding. That was definitely some good riding and some good crashing. Thank you for sending those in. Remember, the GMBN uploader is there for you to get involved in the show, so please do. <laughs> so, thank you for watching this week's show. I'm sorry I've got the giggles. It's Blake's fault. That camera keeps making me laugh. And you think it's me, it's not. It's Blake Samson. <laughs> so thanks for watching the show. Blake, thank you for joining us. And we'll see thank you, you very next much. week. On the Dirt <laughs> <laughs> Love that we can share. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 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 <laughs>